Okay, very good. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. We are so thankful to be able to gather in our worship space on this sacred holy night and also virtually. Welcome to everyone who's worshiping with us virtually this evening. We would really love to know that you're here. So if you could um, chat with us and let us know, or if you could give us a, a thumbs up or something to let us know that you're here. We'd love to bridge the gap um, to transform virtual space into sacred space. And so if there are those here at La Meet tonight who are on Facebook, we encourage you to chat with our virtual community and, and welcome them into worship and pass the peace with one another, share joys and concerns with each other. My name is Debbie Griffin. My pronouns are she, her, and hers. And it is my blessing and joy to be the pastor of Downtown Disciples. Downtown Disciples are a progressive faith community doing justice, loving kindness, and walking humbly together. We are LGBTQIA plus affirming. We proclaim Black Lives Matter. We say that every time we gather because it matters. It matters to speak the affirming, inclusive, justice-making love of our God. Uh, into the world often. Thank you for being here, and now I'm going to invite us into a moment of silence just to rest in the beauty of this night and the holiness of being together. We're so thankful to have High Crest with us tonight, and uh, the last time we were able to worship for Christmas Eve in this space, High Crest blessed us with music that night as well, so it's really fun to have you back for, for Christmas Eve. Last year we worshiped virtually, and I'm going to hand it over to you.
The stars are brightly shining. We are invited to rest a while in the love and grace of Christmas. An unmarried teenage girl was invited to carry Christ into this world. An ordinary carpenter was invited to trust, love, and create family. The shepherds were invited to lead work, responsibility, and routine. And share the good news of an inclusive, expansive love. The magi were invited to travel to a faraway land to see, find, and worship. To give their treasure to a family in need. And if they were invited, then we can trust that we too are invited into the love of Christ. This story is for us. This love is for us. Family of faith, this is our invitation. Come home to Christ's love. Here we are at home. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Courtney. At this time, I invite the children to come forward if they would like. I've got a little something for you up here. Would you like to come up, Rocco? Would you like to come up? I have tasty treats. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to if you don't want to. Okay. It's so good to see you. Rockwell, I'm glad you're on Santa's nice list. <laughs> and I am not surprised because I think you are a pretty nice guy. And you have a pretty great big sister, too. So I, I've got something um, for you, and I'm going to give that to you in a minute. Actually, I've got a couple of things for you. But first, I wondered if you would help me um, tell the story of Jesus' birthday. So I've got, I've got the barn. You remember that Jesus was born in a barn, right? Not in a hospital or not at home with a nice midwife or a doula, but in a barn because there wasn't any room for him anywhere. It was like there was a big convention in town and there was no room in any of the hotels. So I've got some, uh, let's see, I've got an angel who told the good news to Mary, right? And I've got Mary and Joseph, but who else should be here? Who are we missing? Oh, I bet you do. Let's see. We just, you're, you all just sang a song, and in that song, it talked about different people that came to see the baby. Was there some uh, shepherds that came? Oh, and where's the baby? We need the baby, don't we? Yeah. Do you want to put the baby in there? You don't. You don't have to. That's all right. I can do it. No problem. There's the baby. There we go. There's the baby. And, oh, if you look, a little sheep. We got a sheep. Probably need some shepherds, huh? There's a shepherd. And we got some, we could have another shepherd. Right? Look at these folks. These are magi. They came from, from far away. And they thought, whoa. They fell over. That's what they did. And uh, they brought presents. And they followed the stars. Do you like the stars? They didn't have a map. So they just had to look up at the sky and let the stars guide them. So they came and they probably were on camels. Have you ever seen a camel? Me neither. And then there's a cow in the barn, of course. And some more sheep. Who else? Or who else do we have? Oh, the donkey. Mary had to ride the donkey, right? And more angels. There's a lot. This big community they got going on here, don't they? And you know, 
we all came expecting to feel something and see something, but they didn't know exactly what. And sometimes that happens to us too. Like we think that we're gonna see something and we're gonna feel really super excited about it. And sometimes we feel a little different. And we and I just wanted to share with you that it's okay. Whatever feelings we have, if we feel happy or sad or afraid, um, or we feel angry. You know, all of our feelings are fine. These people probably all had feelings that they, none of them were the same. And we learn that God loves us with all of our feelings. And Mary was scared, and she was happy. And Joseph was confused. And then he was happy. Right? So our Christmas story kind of reminds us that God loves us just the way we are. And so much so, the guy came in a little baby that was born in the barn with smelly animals to be with us. That's how much God loves us. God loves you so much, Rockwell. And so, look what Kate made for us. Little angels out of bugles, pretzels, icing, oyster crackers, and Cheerios, aren't those cute? So I have some snacks for you so that you can make some angels. Would you like to do that? You don't want to. Would you like to just eat the snacks? Okay, that's fine. That is perfectly great. So here's a sack for you and a sack for your sister. Yeah. And if you change your mind and you decide you want to make something, Here's some icing that will be the glue that puts them together. So there's some, some icing. Also, I have a plate for you. Because one of the things we like to do at Christmas time is remember that the light of God's love is within us. And that we get to pass that light on to other people. So this is a little light, and there's a switch on the bottom that will turn on for you like that. And so when it comes time later, we're all going to have candles, and you can turn your candle on with everybody else, okay? All right. And you can take those home if you want. Okay. Should we say a prayer? Should we do I say, do I say, you say? Is that okay? And, and will all of you help us? So I'm going to say something to God, and if you agree, you could say it back to God. And if you all would help us, that would be awesome. You ready? No, it's okay. You can be silent. It's all right. We, we believe in everybody's autonomy around here, so we're not going to make you do anything you don't want to. I promise you that. Okay, let's, let's um, either speak or be silent. Christmas God. Christmas God. We thank you for Christmas. We thank you for Christmas. For music. For music. And treats. And treats. And surprises. and surprises. And most of all, we thank you for love. Most of all, we thank you for love. Help us to share your love. Help us to share your love. In the world. In the world. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Oh, and there's also some books here if you want, if you want to borrow any books. I've got lots of different Christmas books there. Yeah, you can take as many as you want. There's one about a, a wombat, even. <laughs> huh? A <divine> wombat. <laughs> Let's see. I'm going to turn these lights in the hope the advent candle would be great. Thank you so much. So we got Jay and Alana who are going to light the Advent candles for us. Okay. 
in God's house, there is hope. For God loves us too much to leave us just as we are. In God's house, there is peace. For all that separates us from God falls away. In God's house, there is joy, because God created music, dance, flowers, and trees, laughter that is contagious, fluffy puppies, and cuddly kittens. In God's house, there is love, because God is love from start to finish, and the love exists for us all. And in the center of hope, and the center of peace, and the center of joy, and the center of love, is God, who came to this earth to dwell among us. So tonight, we light the Christ candle, for God loves us. Just could not stay away. Welcome home. Could you try to turn some of the lights down for me? That's great. Can you see okay, Kat? Yeah. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all should be enrolled. It was the first enrollment when Quirinius was governor over Syria. All were forced to go to their own city to be registered. Joseph went also to be registered from Galilee, the city of Nazareth, to the city of David, Bethlehem. He took with him Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. He went to the city of David because they were of the lineage of David. While out in Bethlehem, it came time for Mary to be delivered. She gave birth to her firstborn son, wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger. In that region, there were shepherds watching over their flocks at night. An angel of God came to them. The glory of 
God shone all around them, and they were afraid. But the angel said, Do not be afraid, for I bring you good news of great joy. Unto you who is born this day a Savior, Christ. Let this be a sign for you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. Suddenly, there was a multitude of heavenly hosts around them saying, Glory to God in the highest and peace on earth to all people. In those days, there were magi who traveled to Jerusalem from the east, following a star. While in Jerusalem, they inquired, where is the Christ to be born, the new king? For we have seen his star and have come to worship. Herod was king in those days, and when he heard of this, he was greatly troubled, and all of Jerusalem was troubled with him. He called for the scribes and the priests to come, and he asked them, Where is the Christ to be born? And they said, In Bethlehem. For it is written in the scriptures, You, O Bethlehem, are not least of all the communities, for from you will be born a Savior who will lead my people in peace. And when the Magi saw the star stop, over the place where the child was, they rejoiced exceedingly, and they fell down and worshipped. They opened their treasures of gold, frankincense, and myrrh, and offered them to Mary and the child. Having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned by another way. And the shepherds went home telling everything they had seen and heard, sharing the good news. Mary and Joseph, being born bone of our bone and flesh of our flesh, came to the end of their earthly lives. But the light that was born that night has never gone out. And it is that light that we celebrate. 
It is that light, the light of God's love that is with us, among us, and born anew in you. It's Christmas Eve, a night of joy and love, a night to be surprised and be together. It's Christmas Eve, and we all want a sweet story, don't we? And I promise I'm going to try my best to send you home with a, a sweet story, good news, love and joy in your heart. My hope is that no one here tonight or in the virtual world in the sound of my voice will go home tonight alone, feeling alone unless they want to be alone, feeling ashamed or afraid or excluded. So I'm going to share good news with you. I promise I am. But first, I feel compelled to remind us of the harshness of our Christmas story, of the mean estate of the Christmas story. Because our culture, we, sentiment, um, we sentimentalize this story, don't we? Uh, and we have marketing schemes that want to tug at our hearts and send us out shopping. Even our Christmas songs and music, I love Christmas music, um, but even those songs and Christmas carols sentimentalize the story. Away in a manger, no crib for a bed, the little Lord Jesus laid down his sweet head. But do we hear the harshness of that song? The harshness of the story, no place for an infant to lay their head. No crib, no safety. Do we hear the mean estate of our Christmas story? Do we hear the lack of hospitality? Do we hear no room, no room? No room. If you have ever been housing insecure, or you know or love someone who is housing insecure, then you might connect with the harshness of our Christmas story. If you have ever lived in a vehicle, in a parking lot, if you have ever lived in a tent, or on the street, not of your choice, then you might connect with the harshness of this story, of the mean estate. If you've been made to feel as if there's no room for you in the world, as if there's no room for you in the school cafeteria, or if there's no bathroom for you, if there is no room for you in the polling places or the workforce, if there has been no room for you lately at the hospital, then maybe you understand the harshness of our Christmas story. This whole story is full of fear, which is why the angels keep saying, don't be afraid, don't be afraid, don't be afraid, because it's a scary story. Can we imagine the fear of young Mary, an unwed, pregnant teenager, who has to tell her fiancé and her family that she's pregnant? 
The religious law allows for her to be stoned to death. Pregnancies outside of marriage meant the person that's pregnant could be stoned to death, cast out. This was a frightening experience for Mary, so frightening that, that she was sent away to stay a while with a relative out of town. Imagine the fear. If you have ever been in danger, if you have ever been shunned or excluded because of religious interpretations of some people, then you might have a good understanding of the mean estate of our Christmas story. If you have ever experienced the fear of an unwanted pregnancy, unexpected pregnancy, and not had options available to you, then you might understand the harshness of our Christmas story. The story is full of fear. Does Mary feel ashamed, I wonder, all the way to Bethlehem? she and Joseph travel in silence? Does she wonder what he's thinking? If you've ever been ashamed because of cultural expectations or nuclear family norms, then you might also connect with our Christmas story. If, like Joseph, we have doubted our faith before, our Christmas story tells us that, that Joseph was a righteous man. He was a man who followed the religious laws. He was a man of faith. And that faith told him he should abandon this woman and this child. And that he could ask for her to be stoned. In fact, it was even expected by some interpretations of the law, that he would have her stoned. But something within him said no. Something within him made him question what is the faithful thing to do here. If you have ever wrestled with your faith, if you have ever doubted the faith that was given to you or the interpretation of the faith that was given to you, or if you have ever been made to feel ashamed because of your interpretation of the faith, this story is for you. Can we wrestle and dare to doubt with Joseph? Do we feel the fear of being on the road at the order of Caesar, that all should be registered. If, if we are, to, if we know or are or love an immigrant, an asylum seeker, a refugee, a dreamer, then we can probably appreciate the harshness of this story, the danger, the lack of hospitality to be ordered to be registered. And this family would not only have to be registered, but soon they would be asylum seekers. Because of Herod and his violence, they would have to run to Egypt, to another country, to seek shelter. It's a big expense. If you have ever struggled with finances and not had what you need to get to safety, then maybe you can relate to the harshness of our Christmas story. Our story is full of fear. It's a story that points to the truth of life. Life can be harsh, dangerous, and lonely. But our Christmas story brings us good news in the harsh truth, the harsh reality of life. Our biblical 
old storytellers didn't paint a sweet, sentimental picture of the birth of Jesus. They didn't tell us the story of a king, a prince, being born in a palace. They said Jesus was born in a mean estate, a manger, that God came as a vulnerable infant, born in a world of violence, fear, rejection, shame, division, poverty. That's the story of Christmas. The story that says God comes to us in our poverty, our shame, our fear, our homelessness, our rejection. God comes to us and makes her home with us in all of our brokenness and our pain. Our biblical writers didn't tell a story of God coming, of Jesus being born at the emperor's palace or at King Herod's home or even born in the temple or other places of wealth and power. He wasn't born into a sweet, perfect, traditional, middle-class family. No, our Christmas story says God comes, God lives, God makes home with us in our mean estate, in the mean estate of the vulnerable, in the vulnerability of human flesh imperfect, hurting human flesh that doesn't always work the way we want it to, that is vulnerable and sick and sometimes broken, that God came to dwell in this imperfect flesh. Our God comes in our homelessness and our shame. God makes home in the mangers and the prisons, the detention centers, the tent cities, on the road between home and the unknown. God comes when empires are violent, oppressive. Our God comes into the vulnerable. And what could be more vulnerable than an infant born not in a hospital with all the benefits of medical technology, but born to a poor, unwed, young woman and a faithful friend. To a non-traditional family, God came. A family whose witnesses were not family members out in the waiting room, but poor shepherds and animals. And not fluffy puppies and cuddly kittens. No, these were large, loud, smelly cattle and camels, dirty sheep, and donkeys. Our Christmas story says God comes to us in our mean estate, in our fear, in our poverty, and even our grief. Imagine everything that Mary and Joseph must have grieved. They didn't start their life out together as they expected. There wasn't the big family Feast and wedding celebration. Mary was sent off in shame. And then they had to travel so late in her pregnancy. Surely they grieved the way they had to begin their life together. They grieved what they didn't get to have. The story says God comes to us in our grief. Makes home with us in our grief. But that's the story that the biblical storytellers have given us, and it is good news. The good news of Christmas is that we don't have to wait to be perfect for God to come to us, for God to dwell within us and among us and around us. We don't have to be with to wait to have the right job or have enough money. We don't have to wait to have it all figured out for God to come and dwell with us in our brokenness, in our vulnerability, in our shame. We don't even have to wait for the world to be as it ought to be, as much as we want it to be. Our Christmas story says God comes to us in our brokenness in our imperfection and dwells within us, is born anew within us and among us. God is with us 
Oh, that's what Emmanuel means. The name they said for Jesus, Emmanuel. Literally, it means God with us. That is the good news of the Christmas story. No matter where you are in life right now, no matter where it hurts, no matter if you're alone or afraid, or if everything is going great for you, God is with you, with us, in our vulnerability. God is with us when there is no room for us. God is with us in the most vulnerable moments. God is with us when the empire is too big and too violent. God is with us when we're not even at home in our own bodies. God is with us, birthing something new in and through us. God is with you. And the angels sang glory to God in the highest, peace on earth. Glory to God when we are in our highest and when we are at our lowest. And peace on earth, no matter where you are. No matter if the world has room for you, God makes God's home with you. Merry Christmas.
So many of us are still seeking, still looking for a place to belong, still searching for a faith that feels like home. The home you want us to inhabit is not fully realized. People are still oppressed, denied justice, equality, safety, education, and health care. War still wage, poverty flourishes, white supremacy, partisanship, greed, and environmental destruction divide us and destroy the home of peace you want for the world. Call us from our rest into discipleship. Make us instruments of your peace. Emmanuel. God who saves us from ourselves, we confess our fear, apathy, and inability to believe the good news that you dwell within us, around us, and in human flesh, even the flesh of our enemies. Forgive us for ignoring your invitation to be the people you call us to be. Forgive us for the ways in which we hold back from deeper connection to you or withhold your radical love from others. Be at home in the good news. God's tender mercies abound. A home of grace has been prepared for you. We are loved through every season of life. We are forgiven and called to forgive. We are not alone. Emmanuel, God is with us. Alleluia. We are always and already at home in love. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Courtney. We have been invited home to a feast of love and grace. You have a place at this table. It is not my table. It is not even our table. It is Christ's table. And at Christ's table, all are welcome. All are loved. All are invited to taste the sweetness of grace in community. At this table, we remember that the little baby for which there was no room grew, grew to be the embodiment of God's love and grace to people who followed him, to strangers. The story tells us that Jesus kept pulling up more and more chairs to the table, making room especially for people who had no room. And so on this night, we celebrate that we have a place, a place to call home in the love and grace of God that we know in the story, in the life, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus. Let us remember how Jesus took bread every day, ordinary, common bread. He blessed it, he gave thanks for it, and he said to them, this is my body, and I have given my body, my flesh, to you in so many different ways. I have touched you with healing love, I have spoke words of peace and goodness and words of challenge to you. I have used my feet to walk with you, and I have been blessed by you anointing my feet. I have washed your feet. 
I have taught you. I have given my flesh to you. So do this. Do this giving your body to one another in acts of love and kindness and mercy. And when you do, I'm with you. In the same way, Jesus took the cup, the fruit of the vine, he blessed it, he gave thanks for it, and he said to them, this cup is a new promise poured out for you, but not just you, for all the world. So drink of it, all of you, and know that you are loved and forgiven and filled with the spirit and called to a life of discipleship. And in Jesus' tradition, this was the cup after supper, Scripture says. The one they saved for the Christ, for the Messiah, for the one who would lead them in a way of peace and justice. Jesus dared to drink of that cup, and then he gave it to all of them to do that too. To drink of the Messiah's cup, the Christ cup, as if they too could do the Messiah's work in the world. Good news. We have a purpose to embody the love and the grace of God and to be that in the world. Let us eat and drink and feast on the good news that we are more than enough and there is room for us in God's home. In just a moment, we're going to invite all who feel comfortable doing so to come forward and receive. We have um, juice and gluten-free crackers, and um, you are invited to take them back to, well, actually, tonight we're going to do this a little different. So you'll come forward, you'll receive your communion, and then you're going to receive a candle from Courtney. And we're going to invite folks to make kind of a big U, a big semicircle uh, along the edge of the counter there and around and, and back up this aisle here. And you're invited to, to take your communion, and then we will pass the light to one another um, with Silent Night. The feast has been prepared. Family, come on home.
would be so very nice and so beautiful. Beloved, as we gather together in the light of love, may we know that wherever we go from this place, we take this light with us. That though we will blow these candles out, they will not go out, for they will be within us. We carry the light within us. The light is that one place, that one time, right now. But now it is in all places and at all times because it goes with us. As we go from here, may you go in the peace, the power, the love, the good news, the joy, the comfort, the strength of the one who loves you best. And may you be blessed to be a blessing. And may you come home with us often. Merry Christmas.
I know that it's a busy time of year and, you, and most people have places to go. But if you don't and you'd like to do that, I can get you the address and we can meet up there at, uh, at Jerry and Lynn's place and sing a few songs. And we don't need to tear down anything tonight. We have worship on Sunday morning, so we're going to enjoy the beauty of this space Sunday morning with Genevieve leading us in uh, beautiful Christmas music on Sunday morning at 11. Merry Christmas. Thank you so much, Hi, Chris. After church, it would be a little later because we'll have to tear this down Sunday. But you know, we could sure do that. They would love it. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Okay, I'll get the address to you. And if you're in church, we can go from here. If not, you we can. I can let you know when we're leaving. Do I have your phone number? Do you text? I think I, I have. I get your messages through text. Oh, you do. Okay, so Carrie has your your number anyway. Okay. All right. Very good. All right. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. I'm glad you like the cross. Oh, I love it. Thank you. And I took it with me to. Um, we had three Christmas worship with dinner, and I put it on the altar. And, uh, so it's it's being used. Great. Great. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.
Hello. 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 I can get to yeah. uh, Jerry's. Hello. Here, Debbie. Hi. I don't know if I gave you one of these, but. Any better? Oh, oh, I really love it. Oh, my gosh. It was so beautiful. I believe beautiful. this is any Everything was oh, gorgeous. Yeah. And we'll, we're going to have you come up here Maybe sometime. Because I want to bring it in the hotel. Oh, I, I love the hotel. I love but it. But I just was, that a whole place is just. Hello. Beautiful. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. Oh, I don't know if oh, and everything. I do, and I but love But she is so spiritual. Hello, hello, hello. Oh, is, are we still on? <laughs> We're still on.